my oldest son, after enjoying having me read to him the entire Harry Potter series, next requested that I read The Hobbit to him. So we read the book, and then we watched the trilogy of movies that covers the book. So let's talk about the book, and let's rant about those movies. I've stated before that at the risk of losing any geek cred I might have, the only IP or intellectual property that really gets me excited is Tolkien's The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings stuff. There's not really any other IP that I've really latched onto in the same way as I have onto Tolkien's works, so I'm definitely a fan of this material. Now, The Hobbit is a pretty simple, straightforward book structure-wise, in that it's an adventure, it's a travel adventure, where the characters will move to a location, something kind of random will happen to them, they'll overcome it, they'll move to another location, something different and will happen to them, they'll figure, so, figure out how to get through it, and so forth as they move on down the path towards their destination. So it's not like a John Irving novel where he would take something happening over here and something else is happening over here and something's happening here and by the end of the novel Irving will have interwoven all those things together into a grand finale. It's a much more complex plot structure in that manner and that is taking seemingly disparate events and people and finding a way to connect them in a clever way as the book progresses instead of just kind of a linear this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. But it's not really meant to be a complex book. I think that Tolkien wrote The Hobbit as an adventure book for children specifically. So on that level it definitely succeeds and Tolkien obviously has created this huge deep world and we definitely get an introduction into this vast universe that Tolkien has created before diving next into the Lord of the Rings books. I guess one major complaint I do have about The Hobbit is one that the movies actually did well with. So Let's maybe jump over to the films next and we can talk about at least something positive about the films before I get into it. And I was coming into these movies with a lot of hope because I really did love the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy that they had made into film. I'm not one of these hardcore book purists who has to have everything exactly according to what was written in the book. And I thought that they did a really great job adapting those books into a movie setting and really bringing it to life in a very amazing visual manner. So I was a big fan of the Lord of the Rings movies. And when I heard that they were doing The Hobbit as a trilogy of movies, I thought, okay, that could be cool. I mean, they could have a chance to cover every single thing that happened in the book and not really have to cut much out if they're doing three movies to cover one book. So I came into the Hobbit films with some optimism. And then I watched the movies. And let me start with that positive point. So one major downfall of the book, I would say, is that the number of female characters in the book is zero. <laughs> not a single female character is in The Hobbit. Of course, a couple of characters' mothers are mentioned in passing, but there's not an actual character who is female, which is really unfortunate for any young girls who might want to identify themselves with a character in this amazing book. And it is one point in which the movies at least have an advantage over the book in that they've introduced uh, one or two key female characters into the story there. Now, how they introduced the, the main elf female character in particular uh, drove me a bit nuts. So they had this whole love triangle thing with Legolas, the lady elf, and one of the dwarves. And uh, it was just kind of annoying, really, to watch this weird little love triangle, triangle happen over the course of the movie. So from that perspective, while I was happy that the female character was there, I didn't really appreciate very much the role she played in the story there. So I guess even my positive comes with a bit of a caveat in that manner. Now, my major problem with the films is that they took an adventure book and turned it into an action movie. 
And that really changed the entire tone of the story. Instead of being an adventure story, it was now an action story. So every scene had to have a lot of movement and pacing and things happening and fighting and running. And it was a, really a completely different feel from the book. The other problem is with the implementation of these action scenes, it was all done in such a weirdly over-the-top way as if the characters were actually in a side-scrolling video game. Some of these chase scenes through the orc kingdoms or wherever the party of hobbit and dwarves happened to be running or fighting, it was all done in a weirdly physics-defying manner or some of the action scenes or the things the characters were doing, the leaping and jumping and falling and running was all in, done in such an over-the-top video game manner that it wasn't even something that was believable. I mean, we're already in a fantasy setting. You're having to use your imagination. The presenters of the story are having to make the viewers suspend belief to enter this fantasy story already and they really should do that in as realistic a manner as possible in order to help draw the viewers in instead of I guess reminding the viewers that what they're watching is this weird fantasy pretend story. And also by turning it into an action movie they in a sense take the focus away from the characters and put it into the action and so we don't necessarily get to know the personalities of the characters very well and in fact they even turned the dwarves into these caricatures where they were bumbling idiots there for comic relief i guess and that really took away from the characters of the dwarves i think Yes, we had level-headed Balin, and he played a good part in the movie there. But for the most part, there were these sort of bumbling Scottish dwarves who were playing some kind of slapstick role within this action movie, which really took away the gravity of what was happening. The dwarves returning to their kingdom and coming into their own once again. So, yeah, I didn't particularly enjoy that characterization in the movies. Another thing that could be both a pro and a con, perhaps, is the depth that they were able to dive into because of the three-movie treatment of the book. Now, I haven't read The Silmarillion or any of the other sort of backstory stuff behind the whole Lord of the Rings lore, so I don't know what the writers of the films might have taken from the actual backstory and incorporated into the films. I suspect that there were elements that were introduced into The Hobbit to flesh out the wider world of, of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And in that manner, I guess that's pretty cool that we were able to get some more behind the scenes stuff there. On the other hand, I suspect that a lot of it was just made up for the films. For instance, this one-armed white orc character, I think it was, who was chasing around Thor and Oakenshield and the dwarves throughout the entire movie and was there being presented as being sort of the nemesis of Thorin. And it was one of the biggest sort of subplots of the film was this whole hunting down of, of Thorin and his nemesis and the clash between the two, which was, again, totally not part of the books at all and really took away from the main story of of the hobbit so yeah it's cool to see some more behind the scenes stuff with the elven leaders at rivendell for instance but i could have done without all the extra fluff that was thrown in there to fill out the three-part movie in the end i came away very disappointed from that particular trilogy what an opportunity they had to really flesh out that hobbit book over the course of three movies and they just dropped the ball so hard i think in that manner i mean the visuals other than the whole odd video game gravity defying physics that was happening it was really neat to see it visually brought to life i suppose just as with the lord of the rings movies and i quite liked the actor that was playing bilbo i thought the bilbo character was done really well and Gandalf too, of course. There were definitely some strong characters in the film. I guess I need to be fair and mention those as a counterpoint to the dwarves. But no, it's just a shame that the movies were as they were. <laughs> I will say though, I think I did enjoy them better than Star Wars Episodes 1 to 3.
What did you think of the films? Did you enjoy them? Did you appreciate the direction they decided to take with the movies? Or, like me, were you left fairly disappointed by it all? I'm fairly curious if I'm kind of an outlier in my opinions about it, or if other people feel the same way as I do, so please do let me know. The preceding video has been brought to you free of charge by me, Josh. The only thing I ask in return is that you either choose to Or, if you would send a link for this video with someone who you think would enjoy it. And in fact, they even turn the dwarves into sort of character. And, they, and in fact, they even took the dwarves... And by... Oh, our, uh, wherever the...